<laughs> All right. <laughs> ゲットの葉っぱの中で写真を撮ります。It all seems far away. You can hear the waves against the shore. You can okay. feel the warmth Great. of ocean floor. I know it's hard sometimes, but we must keep in mind that this feeling will subside. In the shot, get over here. <laughs> I saw a stray dog on the beach there. He was running free, but when I tried to drive away, All right. <laughs> fantastic photo shoot in the studio and now on location uh, in Bisse Village. Uh, <gasps> wonderful, so happy, beautiful weather. <laughs> Okay, we're back in the office. Uh, we're now going to uh, check out a selection of the images from our location shoot with Briley and then edit some of them with Luminar. Um, in this shoot, we actually uh, started in the garden. Uh, we got some shots using the shell ginger leaves as a background. Um, shell ginger is uh, are these leaves which are used to wrap food uh, in Okinawa and for their medicinal properties. So I thought that would be a great way to start. We shot this with natural light and used a large reflector. Uh, and then we went down to the beach um, and we got some uh, more shots using natural light, uh, which you saw in the video. And then we switched to using uh, a strobe, a Profoto B1 uh, with a off-camera flash softbox. Um, we didn't get any behind-the-scenes video of this because at that point uh, my assistant Gary had switched from doing video to actually holding the l holding the strobe, uh, but maybe we can get some behind-the-scenes footage of that next time. So uh, let's get on the computer and uh, check out uh, some of the shots. So here's a folder with a selection of images from the location shoot with Briley. These are DNG raw files. We have some from the garden, some from the beach, and some from the uh, field near where we parked the car. Now these two images here may look almost identical, um, but it's important to check them at 100%. When shooting with uh, larger sensors or very wide apertures, um, the depth of field can be very shallow. And in fact, if you look at this 3940 image, we just miss the focus on the eyes and it's just behind the eye. Um, whereas if we look at 3939 and we zoom in to 100%, there we can see the focus is dead on. So just a few millimeters difference uh, makes a huge change in the image. When I'm shooting at a very shallow depth of field, uh, I'm going to take multiple shots to make sure that I get the eyes in sharp focus. I thought I would just offer a, uh, a few tips about how you can find out exactly what depth of field you're going to be working with for a particular camera and lens combination. If we go back in time to 10 years ago, I was shooting with the Pentax 672, which is one of these, a uh, medium format film camera. Ho, 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 ho. 
Awesome. Um, this was known in Japan as Godzilla or uh, Gulliver. Uh, it was called Gulliver because here is a regular size camera and here is the Pentax 6.7. Anyway, with the Pentax 6.7, you can see on them that markings to show where your focus is going to be. And also on there, there are these depth of field markings which tell you what is going to be in focus. So I could set it to aperture f22 and then I can adjust the focus so that the infinity mark is on f22 and I would know it was going to be on this side of the mark it's going to be everything from infinity back to just past four meters should be in focus this was a really useful um, way when you're shooting uh, landscapes now, with a more modern camera like uh, this one with a 24 to 70 2.8 zoom lens, uh, it has a little window where you can see where it's focusing, um, but uh, it doesn't have those depth of field uh, markers on there. And so, how do you find out exactly what your depth of field is? And to do this, it's really useful to download a depth of field calculator onto your smartphone. Uh, something like the simple depth of field here. And what you can do with this is you can enter the different variables which affect depth of field, uh, such as the sensor or film size, the aperture, the focal length of the lens, and the distance from the camera to the subject and once you've given the calculator all that information it's then going to tell you uh, what the depth of field is going to be so in the example um, from today's uh, the location shoot uh, we were using the Pentax 645Z a 90 millimeter lens we were shooting at f2.8 um, and if we were let's say 70 centimeters away from the subject bum, 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 bum. Uh, that's telling us our depth of field would be just uh, 1.49 centimeters so it gives you a clear idea of just how shallow that depth of field is and what you have what the sort of tolerances you have for focusing so a useful um, a useful thing to get for your smartphone let's go back to editing the images I'll start by opening up an image of Briley in Luminar. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the LUT mapping and kind of adjust the colors. So let's try out Grace and adjust the strength of that LUT. And that's got a cool green tone. Let's see there's before and there's after that's interesting but maybe not what I'm going for let's try Manhattan and yeah I think I prefer this one so let's give it a bit more strength let's see before and after yep okay I like that let's let's go with the Manhattan lot I think we'll just increase the contrast a little bit though there we go. And yeah, that looks good. So next, um, I think we'll go, maybe bring down the highlights a touch and increase the clarity. Great. Now we can check out uh, the overall changes we've made to this image using the eyeball tool. So we have before and after. And I'm liking those overall changes. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and save those as a filters preset. And 
Let's go with Briley location. Shoot. And now I can use that preset on other images in this series. But before I stop, I'm just going to make a few other adjustments which are specific to this image. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to the Adjustable Gradient tool and click on that. Now, if we have a look in the bottom right corner of this image, it looks a little bit maybe too bright. It's kind of drawing attention away from her face. So I'm just going to darken that down a bit. So I've set the orientation of the filter and then I'm just bringing down the exposure of the sort of lower half of that filter. And if we just go down here, we can see what I've done. Like look at the bottom, bottom right, that's sort of bright and that's dark. Just small um, a change, but I think that helps the image. Uh, and next, can you, there's a little red mark on her chest. So to remove that, let's go to the clone stamp tool. So I'm just going to select the source to you clone and stamp. There we go. And ooh, it's vanished. Super easy. Now if we check on the image, we can go to the eyeball tool and see before and after. Before and after. Great. So with the images in this uh, location set with Briley, I'm using the uh, Luminar uh, editing software really to finesse the image just to change it to the kind of look and feel that I want to uh, show with the image. Now in the studio shoot I wanted to use uh, Luminar to create a variety of different uh, looks and feels um, with different LUTs and different types of editing. Um, but in this sequence uh, I want to have a more cohesive feel through the set of images and that's why the preset is so useful because uh, I will have a similar starting point of the same uh, LUT at the same strength, the same amount of uh, clarity and reduction of highlights and all these other factors um, as a good starting point for this sequence of images and then from there I can make uh, other adjustments to the individual uh, photos. Now, uh, before we have a look at those images, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Briley Williamson for modeling for us. I'd like to thank Jessica Ochoa for doing the makeup. Uh, I'd like to thank Gary for taking some behind the scenes footage and for uh, holding the light when we were using the off-camera flash. And thank you uh, for uh, watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the Skylum Japan channel that would be fantastic. Uh, thanks very much for watching! When no man is an island I once heard someone say but in the middle of an ocean It all seems far away You can hear the waves against the shore You can feel the warmth of ocean floor I know it's hard sometimes But we must keep in mind That this feeling okay. will Thank subside Thank you, bye-bye Nailed it! Yes. I saw a stray dog there he was running